Now, let's pretend for a second that you've got an existing package and they've released a new version of the product. So in this case, we're going to look at SQL Management Studio as the example. So let's pretend as an example that our chocolatey package is out of date and we want to update it to the current version of SQL Management Studio. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and download the SQL Management Studio files. As you can see, they're already downloaded, saving myself a bit of time for the video and obviously you guys don't want to sit there and wait while I download them. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and have, have a checksum because at some point you will need to identify whether the files you've downloaded or include in your chocolatey package actually make sense in terms of are they the correct file, are they the correct size because there could be some network interruption. Now the best way to do this is to have a checksum tool and we can use the chocolatey install checksum to get just that, a checksum tool. So now that we have our checksum tool installed, uh, I'm going to look at the two files that we've downloaded, but primarily let's start with the first one, which is the, the straight install. So the command itself is simple enough. We have checksum, uh, then we're going to use the dash t command in order to specify what type of hash value we're going to use. In this case, we're going to use the uh, SHA-256, uh, which is the bit encryption. Um, and then we're going to specify the file which we want to do the checksum on. Now, in this case, we're generating the checksum file. We could do this in reverse with the dash c and provide the checksum and confirm if the checksum matches which is basically what Chocolatey will do when it's downloading the package anyway. So we're not going to do the lookup. In this case, we're just going to create the original checksum. So in this case, I'll just specify the file and we'll go ahead from there. Now, once this is started, it takes obviously a little bit depending on the size of the file in terms of time to run. The bigger the file, the longer it needs and so on and so forth. So if you are doing this and you're creating multiple chocolatey packages, I recommend building a kind of workflow that supports checking the files as well as creating the various versioning bits of information. Now, at this point, we have a checksum file for our installation. And I'm just going to flip over to my chocolatey file now and look at what is the current configuration say. So we're in this case, I need to pop over to the uh, install directory for my chocolatey package, which if I remember rightly is now in my downloads folder because I took it from somewhere else. So I'm just going to copy to the clipboard the checksum value, uh, pop over to the downloads folder, open up the downloads, uh, open up then the install file, and at the top of it we're going to see a couple of um, things, one of which is the location of the file, which we're going to change for our local repository, and then below the checksum. Now, the interesting one here is because the package itself I've chosen to use is already on the same version as the files I've downloaded, the checksum actually matches, which if you think about it makes perfect sense given the fact that the file came from the same place, in this case, Microsoft. So I theoretically don't need to do the checksum values on this, but it actually works well for me because this also confirms that the files I downloaded earlier do match the original values which someone else has. So that, that's actually kind of a check backwards. Um, and the other part of this is I'll do a quick check and confirm the build numbers are the same and everything else within this build. Now I don't need to do this because obviously I know that these are the same at this point. But by doing it, it does give me the option to save the file again. And the only thing that's really changed here is I've changed the location which we're getting these files from, in this case, my local host. And it's important to understand that when you're creating chocolatey packages and you have large executables, ISOs, or other files that you need to download, it is really a good idea to keep them outside of the package itself. And the reason for this is simply one of performance. If you need to start the chocolatey install and the whole thing is configured inside of one file, then it's going to take a while to even start because it's got to download that file. So by keeping the two files separate, you give a little bit of independence and flexibility. So you can 
have additional files or change the version of the files or repair the file without needing to repair the whole package. Um, there's also some benefits that you can specify then different repositories and when you're changing a file you don't need to worry about um, this specified location being always different. Let's say as an example I have a load balancer and I have 20 web servers behind it. I specify just the load balancer URL and I'm done. So everything that's behind it, although it needs the same file, is generally not a problem. So anyway, um, we're going to flip back over now to the chocolatey package and just confirm that what the changes I've made are successful by doing a choco pack. And then, realistically, I could do a, a choco upload as well. But, uh, or choco push as it is. Um, in this case, I'm just going to do a choco pack to prove the file gets created. We have our package file. All looks good. We even have the version number, which again, under normal circumstances, I'd modify the XML uh, file to change the version number, but since it's the same, it makes no sense. Um, and, and that's it. That's as simple as it is if you're updating an existing package. So hopefully I didn't bore you to death in this episode, but if you did like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. And as always, um, subscribe for more content.